I, I would. I would literally buy this shoe again. <laughs> This has been way long overdue. It has been almost four months since I have ran in these shoes, which the last time I ran in them was my marathon, where I ran a 254.08 marathon in these shoes. These shoes were definitely something very special, something very unique. I have a lot to say about it because this shoe was just something so different compared to other shoes that I ran in, and it was hard to get used to. I'm not gonna lie. It's definitely very, very hard to get used to, without a doubt. Not going to lie about that. It was definitely different from shoes that I have been running in, like the Hoka Clifton 7s, the Hoka Clifton 8s, even the Hoka Mach 4, which when I first ran these shoes, these felt different. They felt like a whole different scenario, a whole different cushion, but I noticed they were a lot faster. They were a lot more responsive. And when I ran in the Hoka Clifton 8s and the Hoka Mach 4, I noticed that when I ran these, I'm like, it kind of has some similarities. It's almost like a cross between the Hoka Mach 4, the Hoka Clifton 8. Now that's just my opinion. In my opinion, the Hoka Mach 4, it was a very fast and responsive shoe, while the Hoka Clifton 7 was more for an easy day shoe. But if you needed to go fast, you could go fast. Now, if you remember, I ran a half marathon in the Hoka Clifton selection and I actually ran pretty fast. I ran a 127.45 half marathon, but then nine months, gained a lot of fitness. I decided to run my marathon in the Hoka Carbon X. So these shoes were definitely very helpful. I don't know for a fact if I could have ran the same exact time if I decided to run the Hoka Clifton 7s or Hoka Clifton 8s or Hoka Mach 4, but I feel like this kind of helped me to run a 254.08 marathon. Now, don't get me wrong. You're not going to automatically run a sub three hour marathon if you wear these shoes. You're just not. You have to put in the training. You have to put in all the effort to be able to run that. A pair of shoes is not going to do that much, but a pair of shoes will definitely help you because you have to run with the course of pair of shoes. I guess these shoes did help. I did run in these three times prior to running and racing a marathon. And so when I raced the marathon, it kind of helped me readjust to see how it actually feel like running the 26.2 mile distance. Now something so random. I am dealing with plantar fasciitis, which I'm not going to say it is from the shoe, but I was fine the whole entire marathon training. Body. But as soon as I started transitioning into this shoe, I started to feel some heel discomfort and my plantar fascia was kind of getting irritated. And as soon as I transitioned out of these shoes, my foot got fine and recovered well but when i raced my marathon which was in these shoes my foot got aggravated between miles 11 and 14 my foot was kind of aggravated and my heel was kind of irritated and overall i can feel the plantar fascia tendon being inflamed and being irritated big time not saying it's from the shoe it could have just been from the impact and the stretch that i was putting my body for 26.2 miles i'm not saying it's these shoes but i have a high feeling that this shoe could have possibly caused my plantar fascia eyes because I was perfectly fine running in the Hoka Clifton's and the Hoka Mach 4 but as soon as I transitioned into a brand new shoe which is the carbon fire plate shoe my plantar fascia tendon did become definitely inflamed and irritated. Maybe it's just me. Maybe any carbon fiber plate shoe is going to irritate my tendon. It just is. Uh, everybody's body is different. Now about the shoe. The shoe does start at $180. The last time I looked, I'm not really sure what it runs anymore, especially with new versions of the shoe coming out. And in a men's size eight, I think it is 8.4 ounces. In women's, it is a 7.4 ounces with a five millimeter drop heel to toe. And like I said, I raced my marathon. So it is a racing road shoe. Yes, you can run on trails, but I don't know why you would run trails with a car 
carbon fiber plated shoe specifically designed for the road where it has no treks or whatever you want to call them. No like terrain that is typically built for trails and mountain running and all that. Specifically built for the road. Now I did notice this shoe could be used for any type of runner. Whether if you are a hill striker, mid foot striker or four foot striker. Now I am personally a hill striker I believe. As I look at my running form it does look like I do hill strike but it doesn't really matter. Now I noticed that hill striking there is a cushion on the back of the shoe which does help absorb shock to the shoe so it can help support your foot in the shoe and I actually think it possibly could have impacted it probably might have been too much cushion on the back part of the shoe that possibly could have caused my foot and heel to be flared up as you see it does have some cushion throughout the front of the shoe it actually throughout the whole shoe but specifically in the heel area it does have so much cushion like specifically literally in the heel area that it might have been too much cushion in my heel just did not like it my foot overall really did not like now i know i'm talking a lot about my plantar fasciitis and how much this shoe could have possibly caused me to possibly develop that or irritate my tendons and i'm not saying i dislike this shoe i really do love it it helped me run a very fast race and it was just a different shoe to try i don't think my foot was really used to it but it's necessarily a very stiff shoe like you cannot move it at all like it has no twist in it at all like zero just can't it's a very stiff shoe as much times as you can bend a normal shoe you just cannot bend this shoe at all you really can't it's supportive it provides cushion but it is a stiff shoe be aware of that because the stiffness of the shoe does not help the foot flex like it should in a normal shoe when you're running in like i don't know let's say the hoka clifton eights like the shoe i know i know i'm able to like bend my toes kind of flex my foot a little bit more and use activation to my foot but with this shoe specifically you can't overall move your foot around you can't feel the flexibility that you have going around in your foot it kind of is just a steel pattern throughout your whole entire foot and it causes the foot to stiffen up which can at the end of the day inflame your tendon inflame your fascia and possibly even the achilles tendon and make your calf tight just because it doesn't have the good ankle mobility and the foot flexibility that you would like in a typical normal shoe now i don't really know what other carbon fiber plated shoes feel like but i can see the same thing the carbon fiber in the shoe allows the shoe not to really bend that much allows it to really be flexible it's more focused on how can i provide you the least effort with still going the same speed and so you're able to go faster that's what it's more focused on it's not focused on the stiffness that it causes your foot because when i ran in these shoes i did notice some stiffness in the bottom of the shoe which did cause some stiffness into my foot which i did have to roll out my foot at times after the shoe now another spec that I feel like this shoe does have like I talked about other carbon fiber plated shoes I don't think it would be as fast as other carbon fiber plated shoes like the Nike Apple flies or vapor flies anything like that just because Hoka is based on their cushion they want to make you have more cushion so it makes you feel like you're flying through the air and allows you to go fast with still providing the cushion compared to other shoes I'm not saying that Nike and Brooks and Sacconis don't provide cushion but they don't provide as much as Hoka which does look lower down the weight this shoe still really heavy for a carbon fire plate shoe that wants you to go fast it's 8.8 ounces or whatever that's a very heavy shoe compared to the vapor fire or something they're on a six ounce range so very heavy and i do not think the shoe would be as fast as a normal carbon fiber plate shoe now you do have to remember jim momsley did run in the carbon x's or it was a carbon x2 i don't really know which one he ran in but he attempted the 100k roll record um not even the u.s the 100k roll record and he was like 17 seconds off so as you can tell this shoe like i talked about like two minutes ago it provides enough cushion so you can run them very long growing distances so you can put a lot of distance on these shoes compared to other carbon fire carbon fire plate typically wears out around i think 150 miles i think this shoe would actually last a lot longer than other carbon fiber plated shoes which is a really good thing like 
right? Jim Wamsley ran 62 plus miles in these shoes. So you can definitely run a marathon, a 50K, a 60, 70, 80, 100K, and possibly even that 100 mile distance road race in these shoes. It just goes to show you they are a good shoe. And the reason I try these is because of Jim Wamsley. Jim Wamsley kind of like influenced me to buy these shoes because I saw how fast he ran those in over a long distance, only coming 14 seconds or so from the world record. So these shoes definitely, I think, are worth to try without a doubt to help you go fast with still providing that good protective cushion that you need to go. And so I know the shoe review was a different video from other shoe reviews compared to other people's channel, but that is just my opinion. I'm not going to dive so deep into the details of the shoe because this video would kind of be like all over the place because I just don't really know how to describe the shoes in details of the scientific base efforts. So that is my opinion of the shoe. I would say I would buy it again. I definitely would buy it again. And it's definitely worth a try for y'all if you're wanting to run a fast road race. It doesn't even have to be that half marathon or marathon plus distance. It could just be a 5k or a 10k road race. So I would definitely give the shoe a try. Definitely. Like I, I would. I would literally buy this shoe again. I do really love it and it helped me run fast on the road. So I would still buy it. Even though it possibly could have caused me the pain in, in my plantar fascia that has now kept me out of 17 weeks of running. So yeah, that is just my personal opinion of the shoe. But I'm going to get you the question in the comment of the day. So the comment of the day goes to C. Thor. I possibly might have got this comment of the day before, but oh well, I don't really care. <laughs> so you get the comment of the day. You said that the editing of these videos are very well done. Really enjoying following your comeback. So I want to first thank you very much, but I personally do not do the editing. Chris does the editing. And I just realized I forgot to say my name at the beginning of the video. I forgot to say my name. So I am Matthew. I'm so sorry. I, I keep forgetting. I know y'all like to tell the difference, but I keep forgetting to say my name at the beginning of my video. I just have to literally write down a sign everywhere in my house and make sure I say my name at the beginning of the video. But I can't really do that much about it anymore. So that's whatever. But Chris does a lot of the editing. I do most of the filming. I literally probably film three, four, sometimes five times a week. I have filmed a lot in the past two days, a podcast and like three other videos, a shoe vlog, this vlog, actually a vlog yesterday and a vlog today. So that's five videos in two days. So yes, I do do a lot of the filming and I do a quick little edit to kind of sound, but he finds all the music. He does all the cutaways. He does most of the editing is what I'm just going to say. He probably does 80, 90% of the editing, but I just do a quick hour edit to each of the videos while he does the other six, seven, 10 plus hours to other videos. He did edit the documentaries. He does edit my race videos. He does all the editing is what I'm just going to say. So I know he will definitely appreciate the comment. And I still very much appreciate the comment because it really does mean a lot and helps really does support us. And if you do want to support us, you can help support us on Patreon. It really just mean a lot. If you just even support us on Patreon, just by pledging $1. $1 is all it takes. $1 each month. That's $12 a year. It's not that much, but it can help impact and change our lives and make this YouTube channel better. But the question of the day is, what is your favorite pair of running shoes? I might have gotten that question of the day in one of the previous vlogs, but it, I feel like it just ties in perfectly. Is What is your favorite pair of running shoes? So that is today's question of the day, and I want to thank you all for watching. Stay humble, work hard, be kind. I'll see you all next one. Peace.